Okay, so this panel is about blockchain gaming, Web3 and blockchain gaming. So we have seen gaming coming of, uh, of an age and uh, it has evolved over the years. So I want to touch upon, uh, you know, uh, what is driving the shift towards the blockchain gaming. Any of the panelists? Yeah. So I think uh, Manish has covered a lot of aspects, right? Yeah. Um, the <clears throat> value was essentially with the publishers or the guys who were building the games. That shift of value to actual users or gamers who are playing, right? Uh, that is the key aspect which is driving to Web3 and blockchain. Um, obviously, a uh, lot of things are far-fetched. These are early days of Web3, but I believe um, again, the value going actually to the users, somebody has to solve for it and it has to be on a very holistic level. Uh, and more or less, uh, people like gamers today spending huge amount of money and time on the, in their life, right? Uh, buying these assets and uh, it's, it's become life these days. Gaming is something which is coming organically to us. It's not just that we are spending time for gaming, it's just that uh, now we need to learn games for socializing or any other reasons. So, if it's taking enough time of ours, then it would be rather investing than spending, like Manish mentioned, right? And um, it has to shift from the point that only few stakeholders in the ecosystem are capturing the value, and it should deliver. It should be delivered to the actual audience, which is consuming the gaming content, right? So that sort of element of blockchain is something which Web3 is sort of promising to everybody and that is why everybody is so excited about blockchain in gaming and it has to play a significant role. Okay, comments from other panelists, your views? Yes, in my point of view, so that is not going to be separate uh, blockchain gaming or anything like that. So I feel like every game will become a blockchain game. Why? Because already there are 200 billion dollar worth of assets, in-game assets people are buying. Right? It's not a new industry, right? People are buying. But the challenge is like they can't resale that asset and then you can't take that asset out and sell it in somewhere. There is no such kind of technology or marketplace available before. Right? This entire 200 billion that uh, people used to buy, which is something, you know, it depends on the game inside alone. Right? You can't rent that NFTs, you can't market it or you can't take this NFTs to the different game. All this kind of technology is not available before. So that's why there is no innovation is happening. So people only depend upon in-game assets. Right, if they update a new game, that's it. So the, whatever you bought, and everything is going to be no value after that. So the beauty of this blockchain gaming, because of this entire $200 billion of in-game assets, every asset can be NFTs now. So that people can buy, if they don't like, they can retrade, or else, you know, they can rent it. So all these kind of functionalities are available. So this will create a new market cap. So imagine there's a $200 billion of market cap. So if a lot of uh, trades happens between the people, it will become a trillion dollar economy easily. So that is the space we are in. So we have a marketplace called Jump.Trade. We launched a cricket game where, where we got a huge traction. Within eight minutes, we sold out 55,000 NFTs. People are trading and you know, uh, you know, selling the assets, playing the game, so renting the assets. All this kind of uh, economy was newly created because of the blockchain game. I feel blockchain gaming is going to be everywhere, right? Every game will become a blockchain game after some point. So that is what I think. Even Play Store and App Store are open now to support NFTs, so which is going to create a new market and that is the way I see, uh, you know, blockchain gaming. Okay. Your views, what has driven the shift in uh, blockchain gaming, towards the blockchain gaming? Well, so I'm in agreement with my co-panelists and uh, the way Manish summarized it right before this session was like bang on the point, right? The, uh, what's driving the shift is the, uh, the ask from the gamers to own their own time and get value. Uh, for, for the time that they're inputting in the game. Uh, classic example that I always take is, like my favorite game is Battlefield. I've played it for hours and hours, but when I stopped playing or I shifted to another game, whatever I had earned in that game left behind, right? So I'm not gonna double down on that point because like, you know, my panelists have already highlighted it and like having this session ri right after Manish explaining it so nicely, I think that certainly does not seem like a good idea. Uh, but what is, at the same time, you know, uh, uh, like completely uh, factoring in the potential it has, like uh, he mentioned about the billion dollar industry it has. At the same time, we need to understand uh, the current drawbacks. Uh, right, the Web3 games are not fun to play. Web3 games are not cool, they don't look good. You go there, uh, you play Web3 games just to make money. 
So at the end of the day, it's a job, it's not fun, it's not engaging. And that is why uh, currently the engagement or uh, 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 the user base is so less. Right, because triple A games are not going to enter this ecosystem unless the user base increases, and the user base won't increase unless the games become fun to play. And hence the whole shift that we are talking about from Web 2 to Web 3 has to be gradual, uh, and has to be in a way that games are built not with a mindset of making money, or uh, not with a mindset of integrating it with blockchain. Uh, integration with blockchain and NFTs has to be a subset. Games are supposed to be built with whole the game designing mindset in mind, uh, you know, games are supposed to be fun. So you can you have to continue the whole uh, process of building a traditional Web2 game with an added functionality of integrating it with blockchain and NFTs. Currently, what we are seeing is most of the games are built with blockchain functionalities and NFTs in mind. And that is where I see there's a big gap which is coming in. Okay, uh, your views? Yeah, so uh, what I believe is in terms of the uh, uh, basically taking advantage of the technology and creating the games, another side of uh, something which uh, everyone should focus on is also how to build these communities strong enough, right? And how to spread awareness uh, about the game so that there is an active user base and also there are uh, active small communities who are very passionate about know, uh, playing these games and uh, making sure that their time is valued enough and they're making money out of it as well. So uh, in terms of uh, building the game, uh, everyone is doing it quite well, but there should be a specific focus towards community building as well, because in the end, that's what is going to build a long-term relation with your, uh, the whole gaming ecosystem, right? So that aspect, I think, uh, companies should also focus on because that is where uh, the scalability factor will come in. Okay, Juliet, I'll come to you uh, in a bit. Uh, we also have Piyush with us virtually. Uh, good evening, Piyush. Uh, it's been yeah. very long you have been waiting. So uh, I just, we were just discussing, you know, what, has, uh, what is driving the shift towards blockchain gaming, your thoughts, you know? Thank you so much, and my apologies, I couldn't be there. I have a personal commitment, so I couldn't travel. Uh, but good to meet uh, all of you. And I think, uh, you know, after having a crash course from Man Manish, uh, I think everybody there would probably know what Web3 Gaming is, or at least would go out and explore, because I keep telling Manish that if there's somebody who can build that uh, new stream of gaming in India, it has to be him. So I'm so glad he's shifted and he's doing it. See, from our perspective, uh, I think from a definition perspective, everybody has explained it so well that what is the key difference between a Web2 and a Web3 game, how a lot of ownership will shift to players, uh, how you can make money while playing games. And eventually, even from a development perspective through DAOs, you know, players uh, or fans can actually play a role in games of getting better. So I think all of that will evolve over a period of time. The way I see it and, and something that uh, was, was very well highlighted in the last point that the key aspect of a game becoming successful has to be the community building. And a lot of community building happens on the game and most importantly on streaming platforms, which is where Ruta comes in. So for us, uh, it is extremely important that Web3 Gaming in India grows much faster than uh, what we have seen. And I think it's a lot to do with how Web3 market in general has performed over the last few months. But uh, overall, uh, the future of gaming is in Web3 and for us, it is extremely important that we see uh, close to 10 to 20 Web3 games pick up over the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, we already partnered in BGG uh, in, in our earlier days, in their earlier days, and we saw good traction. And we therefore believe that uh, it's going to open up a new scheme or a new world of gaming. Uh, and, and for that, a lot of work needs to happen from the developers. And, and as rightly pointed out, uh, the overall experience, all of that needs to improve for sure. But I think we are in the right direction and it's really going to change a lot uh, as far as gaming is concerned. Okay, all right. Uh, Juliet, I want to come to you to ask, yeah, take, your, take the mic. So as you, as an investor, how do you see blockchain gaming space? Okay. Uh, actually, I would love to identify like a few major pillars 
for successful web-free game in the space and how we usually look at that. So what is the most important? First of all, it all starts from storytelling. Unfortunately, lots of people, they forget that, you know, storytelling is the most important thing within the game. There are so many multiple games. What could make me as an investor or as a player to play this game? This should be something cool, something nobody else is creating, like, you know, cyberpunk or whatever. So it's number one. Uh, number two is the proper strategy. First of all, it's like, what blockchain are you using? How are you using this? Are you going to use put on chain the whole data within the game or are you using blockchain only for external transaction? Because it's all about in-game economy. Then it comes to the tokenomics. Are you going to have two tokens, governance tokens, utility tokens, or you're okay with one token only? So there are multiple factors everyone needs to consider as a strategy within the game. Another, which is, I mean, like as a mistake, lots of people did, and we actually, we did some kind of mistakes by investing in uh, a few gamify projects like that. It's a proper budgeting. So we all understand that to build the triple A game, you need to do the proper planning. You need like hundreds of developers. You need like, you know, like millions of dollars if you really want to build the proper triple A web free game. But some people, they thought, okay, we will do like a few million dollars raise and we will hire like five developers, write some pictures. People will look at the picture like the game and maybe afterwards we will create this game. Of course, they, end up, they ended up uh, raising like, let's say, one million and did some, I can't say that it's MVP, maybe something like that, and that's it. Because they don't have budget, they don't have people, and of course, they don't have the real game. And then the final one, which is also very important, is the targeted audience. Because like I, I, I briefly listened to the keynote before, and uh, people usually mention Roblox. Like my daughters are playing Roblox, and they like it a lot. But you know, if you want to monetize your game, like who are your targeted audience? Some people who are like uh, in the blockchain space or the kids. If the kids are your targeted audience, we can expect the revenue as investor maybe in five, ten years because then it will be the real mass adoption of gaming because games are, became the new reality for our kids. But there is still a chance to create the game who we as a business people could play because we love the narratives, we love the storytelling, we, have, we love the, the, the way we could make money. And uh, to summarize up what I've said right now, uh, it was mentioned actually. We are in the kind of transition period. We can't make web free game out of nothing. So right now, it's better to start from the web to game, then maybe add on some NFTs, because usually people are trading collectibles within the game, and for that specific purpose, we need NFTs. Then add on the tokens, great, because people can trade and monetize what they've been doing before. And then finally, we are in the web free space. So I believe that might be the best recipe for that. All right, thanks, Juliet. So uh, I want to discuss, uh, you just said, you know, a shift is coming towards blockchain gaming, but are there any challenges that we are in, um, encountering along the way? Any challenges that you think uh, we are encountering along the way? In mean, my opinion, I'm, I'm facing a lot of challenges on acquiring more users to the Web3 game. It's not that easy, right? If you're launching Web3 game, so acquiring millions of users, like, a, you know, it's not an easy process in terms of marketing. We have to build a DAO or a community activity, so incentivizing the whole community, so the community will promote the game so that we can reach the masses. That is a way to get acquired users. That's, that is a big challenge right now. So whatever NFTs, we, we mint and sold more than 100,000 NFTs in India. But still, like, you know, it's not an easy uh, process that, you know, normal games are used to acquire millions of downloads every day. Mm -hmm. But, you know, blockchain games is very difficult to acquire. User, user acquisition is a very big challenge. It's what I be facing every day. Okay. So I think I'll <coughs> like to add to that. So there are two ways to it, right? So if you're building a Web3 game thinking day one, or like Juliet mentioned that if it's a Web2 game or let's say a community, and then you're letting those users flow into the Web3, right? So the second is easier. Plus, let's say that would be a little more uh, right to, you know, right path to do it. Like, so for example, I mean, we don't, want to know about www dot, right? We just, 
you know, want to know about x.com or y.com. What do I mean by that is like the protocol which is running behind the website, right? We don't worry about that. We just worry about the product. So at the end of the day, blockchain tech has to be in behind of whatever game you are running, whatever economy you want to run, right? So it's like you can get any Web2 gamer enter the Web3 just like that. If your blockchain tech is running behind and if the user experience is pretty, you know, uh, uh, easy, right? So that is what, in fact, with us, right, with Stan, Stan is like a community of gamers in esports. So we've, we already have like a million gamers on Stan. So what day one we thought that, you know, all the Web3 products today were web-based. There was no app solution, these wallets, these crypto wallets. In fact, I would say almost everybody in this room would find difficulty to create a MetaMask wallet or add money to that wallet, right? And then go ahead and buy an NFT. So I think cracking that day one was something which we felt is important. So just give a user an experience that he or she can just buy a on-chain asset as simple as buying a Netflix subscription or let's say buying an in-app purchase which you do in any of the other games, right? So that user experience has to be very smooth to buy on-chain items and NFTs or tokens that the user is just consuming blockchain like he's consuming any Web2 product. So that challenge is something which is, I think, the top of the table, right? And obviously, if you see that economies like she was mentioning, right? Uh, Everybody's starting that, hey, it's a Web3 game and let's build launch token and stuff like that. But that doesn't work like that. I mean, economies have to be created on top of something, let's say, which is proven or there is a hook in the game, which is actually letting user to come back. Now you're adding the blockchain economy to sort of amplify it or let's say give user an additional way to make money. It shouldn't be the only way to sort of consume the product, right? So user experience and I think the right way to do economy is something which is challenging in the blockchain space. So simplification you mean, right? Right. Do you guys also agree or you want to add something to it? No, I think uh, doubling down on the point that we, that we spoke about earlier, right? The whole, uh, the biggest challenge that we see is, so a bit of a context at Meta Studios, we're a game development company. And our group company, Meta Engine, we are building a platform which has integrated Web3 functionalities so that any game developer don't have to start by thinking that I have to build a Web3 game on blockchain, worry about all these tokenomics, etc. You build a cool game, the integration will take care of. And so when we interact with a lot of game developers, a lot of brands who want to build in this space, uh, sometimes we experience, they come with the whole craze of, hey, the industry is booming a lot, Web3 uh, gaming is going to be the next big hit, we want to build a game on blockchain. Why? Do we even need to build the entire game on blockchain? Right, or we just need to like store some assets or some uh, you know uh, uh, features over blockchain. That's one. The whole uh, uh, approach towards building a game, uh, just because we are seeing a lot of boom happening, uh, we are seeing a lot of talks happening. Uh, the gradual transition which is required, right, from Web two to Web three, without compromising on the fun element of a game, without compromising on the engagement element of a game without compromising on the whole scalability aspect of a game, uh, that is something that we are seeing uh, that there is a bit of a maturity that still needs to come there. Uh, but other than that, the whole, uh, the whole aspect of uh, the ownership, you know, the credibility, you getting rights of your own uh, game assets, that's brilliant, that's bang on point that Web3 provides, right? Uh, but again, like I, um, repeating on the point that I said earlier, that should not be the core of building a game. The core of building a game should be that you build a fun and an engaging game, like she said, like a storyline. Hmm. Like you play a game, like you play a God of War, because the story is amazing, the gameplay is amazing, and uh, AAA games are gonna be here, like it's a long, long road when AAA games enter into Web3, and that's why it's gonna be led by indie gamers, and this is where like, you know, tools and uh, 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 projects where indie gamers gets the flexibility to be, uh, build engaging games without worrying about the whole blockchain integration. That's where the core starts. I think that's going to be very important. Okay. Uh, you want to add something? Yeah. Go on. Uh, yeah, I just want to add. Like, actually, there is another challenge for web free games, and it's AI technology. So... For example, we've got one project in our pipeline, the, the guys are creators of the gaming engine, 
So now what they do, they put a mid-journey experience that you're able to create the picture into the game. So basically, you, are, uh, you will be able to create the game by putting some parameters and keywords just in a few minutes because AI will generate you the game itself based on what you want. So of course, lots of developers, in the pre-developers, like game developers, they won't be needed. So in this case, you need to be super innovative and you need to be psychologist at the same time. So for example, a good friend of mine, he's doing the game, it's called Dijun Zoo. I believe like lots of people heard about it. So he's doing some animals and making people not to kill the animals because of course, who will be willing to kill the animals? So it's something like, you know, to keep people involved longer and longer and longer. So of course, the psychological aspect within the game is also very important. All right. Uh, Piyush would like to know uh, the challenges you think you, uh, you know, are facing uh, for blockchain gaming. Your thoughts on that? Any challenges you think uh, you have been facing? No, I think, uh, yeah, I think these are very early days. There are lots of challenges. As rightly pointed out, the quality of games needs to improve. We need more active gamers to play. The retention of games needs to improve. All these are very strong fundamentals for the community to build on top of it. And at our end, uh, you know, we started working with a few Web3 games uh, around the same time last year, around April, May 2022. And we have seen that building this community is going to take some time, uh, which basically means getting streamers to create content around it. And, and you know, streaming plays a very important role uh, for any game to take off. You know, you, you have the initial players who come and start playing, but once the streaming happens, people start to watch others play. That is where the community gets built. And therefore, uh, what we are seeing is that that's going to take some time. So we'll need to create a lot of content creators around uh, Web3 game streaming. We'll need to also work on short form video and, and you know, video on demand. But uh, from our perspective, see, we, are, we are like a, uh, you know, uh, we are like a next step uh, to, to the game getting successful. So we are, we are waiting and we are hoping that few Indian games and few global games start to pick up within the Indian gaming community. And from there, the real journey will start. So, yeah, it is a very early days, particularly from the perspective of the fact that as community gets built, uh, the game quality and the kind of retention games have uh, is, is going to play a very important role. Okay, all right. We are uh, running short of time and we have to cut short this session. But anybody wants to add something, uh, you know, the final thoughts? Anybody? I think before, so before 10 years, so there is, there is no such a term called a YouTuber, right? Um, there is no term called like social media marketer, right? I think in next three, four years, you, there will be a profession called, you know, gamer. So people show the skill online and then a lot of esports celebrities may be able to see. So gaming will be profession is what uh, I'm guessing is going to happen within next uh, two to three years. Okay. Isn't it all happening already? <laughs> I think, think part part here will agree. We are we all Somebody are uh, yeah, gamers and we are into. I I think we already have such celebrities now in the country. Like these guys have mad following yeah, on YouTube, 15, 30 million subscribers, and and these guys are the next people who are gonna promote. Chaman Prash or anything, you know, it's not going to be Amitabh Bachchan or anything. These would be the gamers who would be, like the guys will be relating more to, because they're watching these guys continuously on live streams, right? So we already have YouTubers who are celebrities, like you mentioned. All right, we and wrap up the session. Uh, Piyush, you want to add something? No, no, no. I, I was just saying that I think Stan and Ruto both will agree that we are already paying a lot to gamers for them to become and be the celebrity they already are so oh but all good yeah. <laughs>